Hi guys, welcome back to Pondering in the Pines. So for this episode we're going to be talking not only spring foraging, but one of my favorite wild foraged plants. So mullein is the name of this one, M-U-L-L-I-E-N. And mullein is really less of an edible and more of a medicinal. It has a variety of purposes and it's actually gonna be a biannual plant. So what I'm holding here is gonna be the second year of life. You have the flowering stalk and the seed pods. But then down here, we also have the first year of life when it has just these broad, fuzzy leaves. Now as a medicinal, this one is highly effective as an expectorant. So something you would wanna make a tea out of or add to a smoking mixture when you're heavily congested dealing with an upper respiratory infection um, something of that nature but uh, for that part the what you're really going to be focusing on for harvesting is actually going to be the leaves so there's really three times when i'm focusing on this plant for harvesting the leaves for medicinal purposes and it contains a very similar component to mucinol that you would find in over-the-counter mucinex. So again, a, a decongestant um, upper respiratory aid. So early spring for its first year of life on these broad-leafed plant bases, fall for its first year of life, or springtime in its second year of life before it starts to make its seed pod and flowering stalk. So for harvesting this one, um, you know, this is really in my front yard, and this grows prolifically across much of the western United States. There's also multiple different species of um, mullen, but we're focusing on the broadleaf mullen. And the leaves that I'm targeting in particular are the ones on the interior of the plant. So by comparison, we have the exterior leaves, which have flattened out and we have the interior leaves which are still by comparison much more fuzzy uh, this soft hairy like structure and this is really going to be what we're focusing on for harvesting for our medicinal purposes so you don't want to injure the plant overly much because we do want all of these to produce their stalk and flowers for the second year just a couple of these from each plant Get us going with our medicinal use here. Now, once you have a selection of leaves, these will go out on my drying tray. And when they're crispy dry, crispy to the point that you could actually snap the leaves in half, without any real effort and no bend or flex to the leaves they're dry enough to be put in jars so i have some here that have already gone through the drying process and these will be uh, kind of the base for the tea that we would make but you can see how they make that nice strong crispy crackling sound they snap with no effort now this would be what you'd brew into your tea. Add a little honey. Um, you could add some other medicinals to boost the healing properties of this leaf. And then for your tea, you're gonna wanna boil the tea down three times. So I start with about a half a cup to a cup of the leaves. And that goes into a gallon of water. And we reduce that water through boiling until there's about a quarter gallon and you're gonna repeat that process a minimum of three times to get a maximum water extraction on the medicinal properties of these leaves. So that's really the biggest medicinal use for the mullen plant. Now in terms of other uses though, it is very much a multi-property plant, something that has a variety of uses. And this was introduced into North America, we think by French trappers, probably in the 1600s, but not endemic to the United States. So largely when you find this, it is an invasive species. Don't be too shy about uh, harvesting a fair bit of it in nature. 
is not only is it invasive, it's actually a prolific breeder. And every seed stalk, when it's fully grown and mature, is capable of producing up to a quarter million seeds. Somewhere around 80% of those are actually going to be viable as new plants the following year. So it does do its job of uh, spreading and germinating quite prolifically. But aside from the medicinal properties of the leaves, when it has its flower stalk, it produces these beautiful yellow flowers. And those flowers have oftentimes been used in uh, herbal remedies, uh, folk medicine as a pain relieving aid. So you would take the flowers and pop them off and you would add that to an oil mixture. Um, olive oil works just as uh, well as really any other, but I wouldn't use things like canola oil or uh, corn oil, peanut oil. Those just aren't quite going to cut it. Um, olive oil is kind of a good place to start or coconut oil. Maybe a clove of garlic in there to prevent the flowers from going rancid while this mixture is steeping. So you take your yellow flowers and add them to that oil. And they're going to sit in that oil with that single garlic clove for a minimum of two months. So 30 days, absolute minimum. I prefer 60 to 90 days for a maximum extraction. So you're not adding heat to this mixture. You're just letting time run its course. So once you have your mixture um, settled out, you can bottle that in little bottles and use an eyedropper. It's great for toothaches, uh, for teething toddlers or infants. It's also going to be really great as an earache ointment. Right, just a drop or two around your ear. And then you can use your finger or a Q-tip to kind of smooth it around where you have that discomfort. So that's another use for this one. Uh, now, the seeds are going to be mildly narcotic in nature. So this is actually something that's been used by many different states over the years as a uh, invasive species control in waterways. So when the seeds are ground up and added to water, it has the effect of paralyzing the fish and other invertebrates that are in those waterways. It'll actually make them float belly up to the top and invasive species have been removed that way. And then after the water filters out in those flowing ponds or streams, the fish slowly come back to themselves and go about their business that are supposed to be there. So that's a, another use for that. Now don't try that in any state at this point, that's definitely illegal for um, you know, harvesting fish species if you're going fishing. You're going to get in trouble with fish and game uh, wardens in any state that you would attempt that in. But because of how soft and fuzzy it is, especially on these bigger leaves, it's also pretty tough and that fuzz doesn't really come off in your hand when you rub it. So it's going to make actually a fantastic substitute toilet paper if you're out in the bush and find yourself sans toilet paper. So don't be afraid to call on your friend the mullen for more base requirements and needs while you're out and about in nature as well. And then one of my favorite uses for it is actually going to be the stalk. So the stalk makes a spectacular fire spindle. So if you're used to making uh, friction fires or if you've ever made a friction fire, this is going to be a great way to incorporate some uh, pre-made, prefabricated materials into creating those friction fires. And if you're curious about that methodology, you can check out some of our other videos. Uh, we'll be posting a video on utilizing mullen to make friction fires in the very near future. But that's going to be our friend the mullen, which again my favorite use for is a tea as a decongestant. So, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Pondering in the Pines, and if you like these videos, follow and subscribe for more nature videos and foraging.